Greetings, everyone. This is Amal Matu from University of Maryland School of Medicine. I'm the host of the ECG Weekly Workout, and I wanted to invite all of you to a really great online conference that we're going to be hosting in February. We've actually done this conference. This is an emergency medicine cardiology conference, which we have done probably about six times now in person, live in various cities in Canada. But because of the pandemic, we have switched over, like so many other conferences, to an online conference. And we did the online conference for the first time this past November, and it was a resounding resounding success. It's a two-day conference that covers an awful lot of emergency electrocardiography and also general emergency cardiology. Check out the website. It's emcardio.com. And in February, we're going to be setting the times to accommodate those folks that are down under. Uh, February 24th and 25th, Australia and New Zealand time. These are going to be your times. For those people in North America and in Europe, these are the times. This is the time on the East Coast. And for those people on the West Coast, it's going to be from noon to around 8 p.m. We'll have another course in June that's going to be a little bit more targeted at typical traditional North American times. But again, for those people that are down under who have not been able to attend our other courses because of the time difference, you certainly don't want to be watching a course for eight hours a day from midnight until 8 a.m. That's pretty harsh. So we're going to schedule the course to accommodate you. There's a lot of stuff that we're going to cover during these two days, and we're going to keep it lively and we're going to keep it fun. Probably about 60% of the course content is focused on electrocardiography. Cardiac ischemia, dysrhythmias, we spent a lot of time talking about ACS mimics, some of the things that are not typically taught, and also some non-ST elevation indications for cath lab activation. That's right, you can actually activate the cath lab for certain conditions that are not associated with ST segment elevation, and it's very important to know what those indications are. We'll go beyond electrocardiography. We'll spend some time talking about acute heart failure, ACS update, syncope, and also one of our newer topics is the cardiac manifestations of COVID, which I think everybody really in this day and age has to be an expert at. If you're practicing emergency medicine, acute care medicine, hospitalist medicine, inpatient medicine, if you're taking care of COVID patients, you've got to know this stuff and you've got to know electrocardiography. Let me show you just a sampling of some of the EKG content that we're going to go through. We're not going to focus on the basics. We're going to go a little bit beyond that. We're going to talk about pearls and pitfalls. Do you know what the indications are for cath lab activation in the presence of a left bundle branch block pattern? Do you know how to diagnose an acute coronary occlusion when a patient has the left bundle branch block pattern? Do you know the Scarbosa criteria, the revised Smith criteria, the Barcelona criteria? You've got to know what manifestations acute coronary occlusion demonstrate when a patient has a left bundle branch block pattern. You've got to be able to bet someone's life on your knowledge. And after this course, you will know inside and out when to activate the cath lab for patients with the left bundle and also for pacers. Check this out. Everybody knows about Wellens syndrome, right? Well, this is Wellens syndrome, right? Biphasic T waves in the mid precordial leads wrong. This is not Wellens syndrome. This is actually a completely normal variant. This patient needs to go home. This patient does not have acute coronary syndrome or Wellens. We'll show you how to distinguish between true Wellens and some of the mimics. Take a look at this. This is kind of another mimic of Wellens. Take a look at those biphasic T waves in the mid precordial leads. This patient has a potentially deadly condition and it's not described at all in the national or international ACS guidelines. But when you see this EKG pattern, which I refer to as the Nikelicam T-wave pattern, you're going to know exactly what drug needs to be given to this patient, which can save this patient's life. That's right. If you've never heard of the Nikelicam T-wave, you better know about it. Here's another interesting condition. This patient has a no-brainer STEMI. Nobody's going to miss this. Your computer would pick this up. This patient's having a septal STEMI. There's actually something on the CKG, however, which tells you that if you give this patient thrombolytics, thrombolytics will not work in this type of STEMI. 
Or in this type of case of acute coronary syndrome, of course, everybody focuses on the diffuse ST segment depression and that ST segment elevation in AVR. We're going to go through the differential for ST segment elevation in AVR. This has become a point of controversy and oftentimes battles between emergency medicine and cardiology. You will understand when to worry about ST elevation in AVR, when it is predicting acute coronary occlusion, and also when it's predicting other deadly conditions like PE or dissection or non-deadly conditions like LVH restraint or left bundle or somewhat deadly conditions like hyper or hypokalemia. Yeah, there's a pretty good differential for ST elevation in AVR, which is not commonly taught, but you've got to know that differential. Take a look at this case. This patient comes in with chest pain and reflux type of symptoms. There's something on this EKG which should tell you that this patient is about to have an inferior wall STEMI. Take a look at this. This patient has a ventricular rhythm. It's tachycardic with the rate of 105. So you might be inclined to call this VTAC and give the patient amiodarone. Amiodarone will kill this patient, but your computer will call this VTAC. This is not ventricular tachycardia. And if you diagnose VTAC and treat it like VTAC, you will reliably kill this patient you'll know the difference. How about this? This is a fairly profound bradycardia. And if you go through your ACLS algorithm, it doesn't work. Atropine doesn't work. Pacing doesn't work. Pressors often don't work. Even transvenous pacers are not going to work. You'll find out why pacers in this particular condition will not work and atropine won't either. And how about this? This patient has a right bundle branch block pattern and a left anterior fascicular block pattern. Now, let's skip over that. Let's look at this rhythm. Take a look at all of those P waves that are not conducted. A lot of people look at this and call it a Mobitz 2 and want to put a pacer in this patient. You know what? This patient doesn't need a pacer. This patient needs a very benign drug to be given to them before they are discharged home. This patient never needs a pacemaker. You'll learn how to distinguish amongst the various AV blocks and the mimics just like this one. How about this patient? This patient went into this run of what the computer called ventricular tachycardia and actually got admitted to the CCU. The cardiology attending showed up the next day and said, why in the world was this patient even admitted? This patient should never have been admitted in the first place. It's not VTAC. The patient doesn't need amiodarone, and the patient ended up being discharged home directly from the CCU, and this was a mistaken admission. We'll talk about that. And there's a lot of other things that we're going to talk about during this course. Again, check out the website, www.emcardio.com. Don't settle for knowing the basics of emergency cardiology. If you want to save lives, which is really the reason we all went into acute care medicine, to save lives, right? If you want to save lives, you've got to go way beyond the basics. We're not talking about esoterica, but we're simply talking about knowing how to really practice well and know emergency electrocardiography and emergency cardiology really, really well. And that's what this course is all about. So I hope to see all of you there in February at the Emergency Cardiology course. Thanks, everyone.